Hey, Mike. Oh, hey, Randy. I'm so glad you're here. I really need an update on the site. Well, we're nearly finished. We've integrated our product catalog with our PayPal shopping cart, and we're ready to start taking orders. After that, we can deploy to the production server. When do you think it'll be ready to launch? I have a marketing campaign scheduled for... Friday afternoon. My balance sheet is strong, but I need to start making some sales to improve my cash flow. <laughs> wow, Mike. Dan and Passan have really made a business frog out of you over in Business Bay. Nicely done. We should finish up everything for the initial launch today, just in time for your marketing campaign. In your browser, visit the root of your local web server. We coded this home page first, before we had the main functionality of the site in place, so we'll need to make a few changes to links. This call to action should link to the shirt's listing page, but right now it just links to a hash sign. We need to make the same change in the latest shirt section, updating each shirt to link to the corresponding shirt detail page. Open the index.php file from your htdocs directory in your text editor, and let's make those changes. Here's the code for the call to action. Let's change that link from hash sign to shirts.php. Further down, here's the list of latest shirts. Let's update those links to, oh wait, this page isn't even using the products array at all. The HTML to display this list is essentially the same HTML that appears on the shirts listing page, but we've duplicated that code here. Oh man, we should clean that up right away. Right above this block of code that displays the products, let's include our products array. Let's rewrite the list of items here to be generated by a for each loop. Remember, we only need one unordered list element for the whole list, so the UL tag goes outside the for each loop. We will need one list item element for each shirt, so the li tags go inside the for each loop. We'll end the for each loop after the last list item and before the closing unordered list tag. The HTML to display a list item should be the same here as it is on the shirt's listing page. They both display a list of shirts in the same grid view. We could set up another include file, but let's instead talk about another way to create code that can be used in multiple places, functions. A function is a block of code that can be called from within other blocks of code. The code in a function usually performs a small, specific task. The code in a function is not executed until it is called from within the main program. We've actually been using functions throughout the project already. PHP has a large number of functions built in that we can call from our own code. Let's take a look at a couple of them. Let's step away from our t-shirt store for a minute. Here's an array of ice cream flavors and a block of code that displays the number of flavors in the array. Remember when we talked earlier about displaying the number of elements in an array using count? Count is a function. We could have written our own for each command that looped through all the flavors and counted them one by one to figure out how many there were. PHP's count function can do something like that for us. There are three main parts to a function. First, the function name. In this example, the name of the function is count. Second, there's an argument list. When you call a function, you can pass it some values for it to use when it executes its code. In this example, the flavors array is the only argument. Some functions don't need any arguments, while others need more than one. It just depends on the nature of the function. Most functions need at least one argument. The count function won't work unless we pass it an argument to count. After the name of the function, you include the argument list within a set of parentheses. The third piece of a function is its return value. With the count function, the return value is the number of elements in the array. This is the core of how functions work. You call them from your code, you pass them one or more arguments, and they pass back a return value. In this example, we store the return value in the count variable. We can now use that count variable later in our code. In this example, we're echoing it out to the screen. We've also called a few other functions. In the footer, we've called the date function. We pass it a piece of text as an argument that defines the format, and it returns the current date in that format. 
A capital Y for the format here means we want the four-digit year of the current date. In our shirt.php file, we call the isSet function. We pass it a variable name, and it returns to us a value of true or false. True if the variable is set, and false if it's not. It looks like you have everything under control here. I need to run to the printer to pick up my latest shirt order. I'll be back shortly to check on the site. Sounds good, Mike. We'll see you in a bit. We've looked at how functions work and how to call PHP's native functions from within our code. Now we're ready to start creating our own functions.